Do you want to know when to pay your credit bill to increase your credit score? Of course you do. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how you should pay, when you should pay it, and what are the best strategies to boost your credit score. In fact, all of the things I will be mentioning in this video has helped me get a credit score over 800. What's up guys, my name is Nam, so here I talk about personal finance. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. So unlike your monthly bills, your credit card statement gives you the ability to decide what is your payment amount and it gives you a bunch of different ways to pay it. The best way to pay off your credit card depends on your budget and your financial goals. With the different amounts on top of your credit card bill or your statement, it can get a little bit confusing. So let's jump right into it. How much should you pay on your credit card bill? So let me show you guys a little screenshot of a credit card statement of mine over here and I'll break down what each one of these actually mean. So under new balance, this is the amount due during the statement period or the billing cycle. Right next to that is the minimum payment due. This means that during this statement period, this is how much you would have to pay before you get charged with late fees. Depending on the credit card that you have, this can range anywhere between $25 to $35 per month. If you have a charge card like the Amex Gold card, then you would just have to pay the balance in full every month. The reason why mine shows zero is that because I already made a payment on this credit card that was higher than the minimum amount. Even though that there is no minimum amount that I would have to pay, since I do have a balance of $50, I will still have to pay that anyways to avoid paying interest. So moving on to the next box. This is the payment due date. This is the date that you must make your minimum payment by. So as long as you make the minimum payment by this date, you will not be charged with any sort of late fees. But as a side note, for any billing cycle or statement period that you do not pay the balance in full, you'll be charged with interest on that balance. And depending on your credit score and the credit card itself, this can range anywhere between 14 to 25%. So now let's go a little bit further onto your credit card bill. The majority of the time on your statement, you will be able to see what is your credit limit. So for instance, on this credit card, I have a credit limit of $11,000. And my available credit during this billing cycle is 10,953. So how this number is calculated is by taking your credit limit and subtracting your new balance. And also on your credit card bill, you may see how many days are inside of your billing cycle. The majority of credit cards, they have a cycle of either 28 to 31 days. So this brings me on to my next point. When exactly should you pay for your credit card bill? First, let me make one thing clear. The key thing about credit cards is not to be late for your payments and pay your balances in full every single month before the statement due date. If you were to do this consistently on every single credit card bill that you have for the rest of your life, you would never have a problem with credit cards. The main point of a credit card is by having another form of passive income. Yes, I know a return of 1-5% to for a specific category is really not all that much, but it's still extra money that you would be earning because you're going to be buying things that you would have bought anyways. So with that out of the way, let's talk about when you can pay off your credit cards to have the greatest effect on your credit score. I'm going to try to explain this as simply as I possibly can, so bear with me. Whenever you hold a credit card, you will receive a statement in the mail or via email. This information will then get forwarded to the credit bureaus. There are three major credit bureaus, which is TransUnion, Experidin, and Equifax. So as a quick refresher, let me go over what goes into a credit score. So imagine a pie chart that equals 100%. 35% of your credit score consists of your payment history. Another 30% consists of the amounts owed or the proper term, which is credit utilization. 10% is new credit. 15% length of credit history, and 10% is your credit mix. So for me personally, I like to make things as simple as possible, and I try to focus on the core things that have the greatest effect. So for your credit score, 65% of it comes down to your payment history and the amounts owed. So if you were to pay your payments on time every single month, I'm proud of you. Something I wish my parents said. As for the amounts owed or your credit utilization, which makes up 30% of your credit score, this is where the amounts that you pay on your credit card bill will factor in. So let me give you an example so you have a better understanding of how this all works. So let's just say that you have one credit card and your credit card limit is $10,000. And during one month, you decide to buy a bunch of things like Apple laptop, maybe a new TV, and some Jesus toast. And this all costs you $5,000. If you were to wait until your credit card bill comes into the mail, this information will be already reported to the credit bureaus. $5,000 of $10,000 is 50% credit utilization. The higher your credit utilization is, the higher the risk you are seeing to lenders, and this will have a negative effect on your credit score. The ideal number for credit utilization amongst all accounts is roughly around 30% or less. So in this particular situation, if you are expected to make a big purchase on your credit card, I would highly suggest making some early payments on your credit card. So by the time you get your credit card statement, you have a much lower balance. And once this information gets reported to the credit bureaus, 
it will show that you are actually using this card, but you do not have a high credit utilization. So if you were to put $5,000 on a credit card that has a $10,000 credit limit, as soon as you make those purchases, pay off $3,000 of it right away. Whenever your next statement comes into the mail, it will only show that you have a new balance of $2,000 and your information will get reported to the credit bureaus and in turn will greatly improve your credit score. This will make it look like you're actually using the credit that is available to you and when you pay your balances in full, that's what I call a win-win. So for all this information that I did discuss with you, apply to traditional credit cards. But now let me talk a little bit more about credit cards that have an introductory zero APR. These are just regular credit cards too, but these are just a little bit different, at least for the first 12 to 18 months. You commonly see this more with balance transfer credit cards or just a promo to get more people to sign up for a particular credit card. Whenever you put a balance on this credit card, you won't be charged any interest on this card for at least a few months or whenever the promo is over. Depending on the credit card that you do have, you may be required to pay just a minimum amount every single month to continue to keep this card at zero APR. So for instance, you may have one of these cards that have a $10,000 credit limit. You put $9,000 on this card. Each month, you are required to pay $35. As long as you pay the $35 every single month, you will not be charged with any type of fees or interest. But since you do have a balance on this zero APR credit card, this will affect your credit utilization. So to keep things simple, let's just say that you have two credit cards. One credit card is a zero APR credit card and another one is just a regular traditional credit card that you may have had a few years. Each one of these credit cards have a credit limit of $10,000. Your zero APR credit card has a balance of $9,000 and the other credit card has a balance of $2,000. So in total, you have a credit limit of $20,000 and a total balance of $11,000. So in this situation, your total credit utilization is 55%. Even though you're not paying interest on the card that has zero APR, this will still have a negative effect on your credit card, just due to the fact that you do have a high credit utilization. But as a reminder, your credit score does fluctuate. As soon as your credit utilization goes lower and your credit history becomes longer, your credit score will improve over time. But in the short term, you may see some dips to your credit score. So let me tell you about this little myth that's going around saying that you should always have a small balance on your credit card, just to show the credit bureaus that you are actually using your credit. Well, this is a bunch of baloghi. Just pay your balances in full so you don't get charged that interest. Hopefully by now, all of this information didn't just go over your head. Now, let's talk about another strategy to pay off your credit card, which is auto payment. Each person has different billing cycles, so each situation will be completely different. But if you like more of a simple approach, rather than calculating your credit utilization and making your payments early, but just leaving a little bit on your credit card just to boost your credit score, I fully understand. So what I recommend here is to turn on the auto payment feature on your credit card. Every single credit card company has this feature. They usually have two options, make the minimum payment every time your balance is due or pay your balance in full whenever your new balance is due. My suggestion is to always have an auto payment of around four to five days before your balance is due and have it set to auto payments for the new balance. This way you will never miss a late payment, which will save you from the late fees and you will also just not be making the minimum payment so you're saving money from the interest. But as a side note, if you do decide to have your balance paid in full every single month with auto payments, do not make any extra payments. Because if you do, you may just be overpaying and you just have a negative balance on your credit card, which means that the credit card company just has this cash sitting there until you spend it, unless you ask for a check. So the reality is, the only bad time to pay off your credit card bill is after the payment is due. Because this can come with a lot of negative effects, not only your credit score will be affected, but you will also have to pay late fees and interest. And paying more than you have to is never a good idea. But if you are paying your balances in full every single month before you get your credit card bill, the credit bureaus may not see that you are actually using this credit, which really does not do anything for your credit score. The best thing to keep in mind is by having a credit utilization of at least 30% or less across all of your credit cards. And when you get that statement in the mail or the email, just pay it off in full. This way you get the best of both worlds. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like because that really helps support the channel. And if you want to hang out with me some more, check out my videos over here.